Okay, so, if we uh, hover over these, and, ooh, hmm, actually this is a little bit different than uh, I'm used to. Is Engine Igniter not doing its thing here, or am I just not seeing what I need to see? I might not have... I don't know if I have Engine Igniter properly configured now that I look at it. Ooh, nuclear fuel. Um, let's see, uh, stock parts... Uh, okay, well, I'm, I'm not seeing it right now, but let's, let's build something. I want to build the SLS. The real SLS, okay? And so I'm going to start with the top, and I'm going to use procedural fairings first. Procedural fairings, and I want a 5 meter fairing. That's the smaller fairing for the SLS. And we need a 70 ton payload. Um, let's get one of these big new tanks that we have in uh, 0.23.5. And this one, uh, now we don't know what the mass is yet. Now, this is interesting. We need to fix this, uh, modders. Uh, this tank has a mass of 12.2. I think it's full of fuel right now. It should be configured for uh, real fuels, but it isn't. So this tank, for some reason, is not configured for real fuels. I don't know why. I'm, uh, it, there might be a new version of, uh, of everything that uh, has it configured, but this one is not configured right now. Uh, this one is, but we don't know what the mass is because we haven't picked the fuel. Remember, the mass is dependent on which fuel you load. It could be six tons it could be 83 tons i i like the idea of taking alcohol up into space so uh how about 60 tons okay 60 tons worth of alcohol sounds good uh let's add another tank to get us to our 70 tons uh come on Ooh. Click. Uh, okay, this isn't working. Something is wrong here. Now these mods have just been updated for 0.23.5, so keep in mind there might be bugs. And some of those bugs might be due to the mod itself or the way it interacts with other mods. Okay, well, um, I, I don't know about this tank. This tank is clearly not cooperating with me, so I'm just going to leave it off. Uh, we'll, we'll take a 60 ton payload into orbit. That's fine. Um, so this will be the basic SLS before any upgrades. Uh, it, Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. Uh, I'm not looking at any stats for the SLS, so I'm going to be going with my memory, which is not a good thing. But So this is procedural fairings. Yeah, let me talk about procedural fairings. Procedural fairings will make your life easier because you can dump the fairings in KW Rocketry and Nova Punch, and those uh, take up much more RAM space, okay, uh, and these are more useful anyway. All you need to do is remember that you need to uh, take either the cone-shaped fairing or the egg-shaped fairing, uh, put as many as, so this one needs three, so you need three part symmetry, and you add it on, and you can adjust the extra width by pressing R, so you can make it fat or skinny, um, and there you are, you have a fairing. All nice and happy, right? Okay, so now the the SLS, the Space Launch System for NASA. Uh, this bears a little bit of talking about. All it is is the space shuttle without the shuttle. Okay, and the center tank of it, the one that I'm going to build right now, is is the orange tank. It's the same diameter as the orange tank. It's just polished up a little bit. Um, that that's all. Uh, so let's let's get the orange tank on, huh? Um, Cylindrical tank. Is this a good cylindrical tank or should I be looking at some of the others? We've got all these too. Cryogenic balloon tank is what I want. Uh, actually, I need uh, some sort of conic one first. So we need some sort of... I'll, I'll leave this this conic one empty. I, I guess I could use a fairing, but there's no point. I'll just uh, use an empty tank. I've got uh, Kerbal Joint Reinforcement installed, so just uh, keep that in mind. I don't know if whether it's strictly necessary with the new version of uh, the way they do joints in Curl Space Program, but it probably is. If you gotta build big rockets like this, uh, you probably do want to 
Okay, which which one is which? Uh, e unfortunately, each of the mods have their own little. Okay, F for width, uh, R for length. So I have to remember which way I'm going with everything. And I think uh, this one. Uh, what what's the top one? Y. Okay, so Y. Yes. Okay, so we need to go from five meters. I am going to show you how to build an SLS. Five meters to eight point four meters. Okay, that's close enough. Now you can change the slope of the cone as well as the textures. So B gives you the cone shape. Uh, I like this shape. Oh no, I don't like this shape. But I just feel it's more SLSy. Um, so this is an SLS -y shape, and um, I think I need to fix the top width a little bit more. There we go. Okay, and then we'll attach our well, what is really an orange tank, but uh, will probably look white by the end of this. Okay, um, we've we've got the basic shape of it right now. And uh, let me shift that up. Now, what the what the SLS has at the bottom is, of course, come on, give me this propulsion, propulsion, propulsion. Uh, is four of the spatial domain engines. I'm not gonna put this cluster because I want to show one of the other features of real engines. It changes where the nodes, the attachment nodes are, so that you can cluster them like this. So you don't need them pre-clustered, and you don't need to put part clipping on. You can just slap them on. I don't have any cheats enabled, so there there we are. And these have the proper gimbling. If you have tweakable gimbal, you might have to adjust that, but that's a separate mod and I don't have that installed right now. Okay, so we can fill up these tanks and once you have the engines installed, you'll have a preset. So uh, this engine takes 73% liquid hydrogen and 27% liquid oxygen, so we just pick that. And there we have it. I'll keep this empty because uh, I, I don't know if they fill it up. I don't think so. Um, now, what we want is Mechjeb because why not? Uh, let, let's let's put some stuff in here. Let's put Mechjeb in here. We don't have remote tech, so I don't have to worry about that uh, communicating with this. Let's put Mechjeb in here and let's put some batteries in here. Uh, four of them. Okay, now MechJib will tell us that, uh, now I forget the exact, because uh, I'm not looking at any stats or anything, I, I have to remember what the size of this tank is. I know it's above 800 tons. So it's not going to be a complete replica. I'm just going to show you how to do it and then we'll have to tweak it to the correct numbers. I know this is 800 tons, which means that it's an extended orange tank. The real orange tank wasn't quite so big. Uh, you'll notice that uh, we can't get off the ground like this. Its thrust is too low. But that's fine because we're going to be adding the boosters on the side. I'm going to put it up to uh, 6 minutes of burn time. Just for, uh, for sanity's sake. And we need decouplers. Radial decouplers. Actually, that's a good thing. I, I haven't actually got a decoupler on here, do I? Or, oh, okay, that does act like a decoupler. Some of them do, some of them don't. So with the procedural fairings, uh, with with realism overhaul, I think realism overhaul adjusts them so that they have uh, decoupling force, um, and it also resizes them. So by default, uh, some of the sizes. So these are the default sizes, but Realism Overhaul gives you these other sizes to work with as well. Okay, and what I want is I'm looking for radial decoupler, not that one. This one probably still too close. I mean, I don't. Uh, I forget if we have uh, one that uh, has it fur off to the side. I uh, 
Is this attachment mm, linear decoupling strut? Nope, that's tiny. Okay. Nope, I don't think there's anything better than these. So, we need to put the big saw rocket boosters, the same old saw rocket boosters that were on the space shuttle. And we can only do that with the stretchable SRBs. Stretchable SRBs. Okay, now I can tell you just from memory that the solid rocket boosters on the space shuttle were 3.5, uh, 71 meters in diameter. So let us increase the diameter to 3.71. Now the length, we really aren't going to have enough choice. We need to have it uh, be the right thrust. So we'll take whatever length we uh, can to get the right thrust and burn time. The thrust for the SRBs on the space shuttle, the peak thrust was 14,000 kilonewtons. So how many kilonewtons do we have right now? We have too much, but look at the burn time. The burn time is one minute. So we're going to change the burn time to the correct burn time, which was two minutes and three seconds. Okay, well that's close enough. Now the thrust is too small, you see. So, we're going to uh, make them taller until they're the right thrust, 14,000 kilonewtons. Unfortunately, these SRBs are heavier than the real ones would have been. Uh, they're, they're about the right size right now, but they're just too heavy. Now, I, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to move these up. Uh, you'll see the empty mass is 62 tons. That's what's heavy. Uh, actually, the mass itself is pretty heavy, too. Let's see if we can uh, reduce the size of these and get a little bit more. No, uh, you can see the sea level thrust goes down. We actually need these bigger. You know what? We can uh, size the main tank smaller. Strange as that might be. It is strange, because I think the main tank here should be bigger, not smaller. Uh, based on... Well, based on the fact that it should at least stretch to the ground, shouldn't it? Me, it's just less dense than I'm thinking. Uh, we've got plenty of Delta V, by the way, but that's because we don't have the full payload of the... We're, we're ca carrying a very light payload. Yeah, I think uh, this t this should be... Just, just in terms of looks, should be about this size, and then the SRBs. Oop, too low. And maybe something akin to that. Now we can probably slap on a nose cone that's 3.75 meter without it being too bad. If it'll let me. Wow, it doesn't even have an attachment node on this one for some reason. Okay, um... Oh, do we have a real shoot that's this, this size? I don't think so. They don't make real shoots that are this big. That's a shame. Oh, I know what we can do. Hold on. Let's let's just get one of these. Forget this huge nose cone. Now that we have the new parts, we have... Uh, well, I don't know if this is actually one of the new parts or not. I think so. Um, but then we can have... Oh, actually, do we have a... No, that's not right. Okay, uh, then we can have uh, one of... Ooh. It says 2.5 meter, but this is definitely not 2.5 meters. And this doesn't have an attachment node. Why does... Okay. This is wrong. This should be bigger than this. I don't know. Sometimes these people... Uh, tiny... 
Come on, is there a shoot worth opening here? Oh, that's better, but there's no attack. What am I gonna do without an attachment point? Get, get. Uh oh. Oh no, it's it's stuck. I can't access that stupid part at the top there. <sighs> what am I gonna do with you? Okay, well, uh, let me pause and get uh, get these uh, SRVs reconfigured because clearly I can't touch them anymore. Okay, I'll be back with you once I get them back. Okay, so we've got this going for us. Now, uh, I'm going to... Because our sea level thrust weight ratio isn't all that great. I'm going to uh, remove some of the fuel in this tank. Now, with the new version of real fuels... Uh, these tanks automatically re refill properly once you resize them, but I'm going to underweight this. Oh, I, I, let me, I know what I want to do. How many zeros? That many zeros. Okay, I think we'll go with this. Launch towers. And we, we need Cephatrons. Let's, let's go with the Cephatrons first. Now, thankfully, with uh, with this, I don't have to worry about the space shuttle. Well, do we, dealing with the space shuttle when uh, adding Cybertrons was a royal pain. Because uh, you have to separate it such that it doesn't hit the space shuttle. Uh, it's easy to separate it so that it doesn't hit the external tank. That's not even a problem. It's the bloody space shuttle that's in the way. We're going to go with three on each side right now. That might not be enough. We'll see when everything comes crashing. We need a controller at the top, I think. But uh, that is something that can be added at the end. And that's what I'm gonna do. Okay. Uh, obviously we don't want them to fire here. We actually want them to fire when these go off. So these all get tucked in Except, uh, I think uh, two of these is actually... Oh, that... <laughs> okay, well, this is complicated. That is... Okay, this is actually one of those. We want the SRBs to go down here, obviously. There's something wrong with this whole display. Okay, that's that. Where is my other SRB anyway? It's like hiding. So yeah, whenever dealing with mods, you're going to have to deal with the fact that uh, there will be bugs. Uh, bugs that are not present in the default game and I'm experiencing such bugs. Actually, uh, you know the realism overhaul mods have worked quite well for me until like now what is wrong with this one SRB that doesn't want to go into the I have never seen such things before this is going to produce a very interesting result and I'm glad I'm not putting a Kerbal on <laughs> okay finally okay I decided to add itself to the thing okay drag it to the bottom I'll have to remember that okay so those are right but we actually need to get these four going down there. Now, interesting thing, the two SRBs combined produce like 28,000 uh, kilonewtons worth of thrust. The four spatial engines down here produce about 8,000. Uh, so, yeah, it gives you an idea how much force these contribute. Oh, 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 oh! Okay, uh, um, the, the thrust weight ratio is totally... Okay, 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 okay. No wonders we were getting. I was going like, why? Why is the space, uh, the center tank having such issues? It's because we don't have it. Uh, we we didn't have it at the right stage. Aha! Now we can put the things right. Put things right. We can remove all tanks. Let's let's get the full complement of those. Yes. Now look at all that. And that's because we've got a light payload. Of course, this should be able to carry maybe a hundred tons to orbit. 
Uh, let, let's increase the payload while we're at it then, huh? Um, let's say we uh, toss a jumbo fuel, fuel tank in, yeah? Just for... Uh, let, let's test the Kerbal Joint Reinforcement. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, more alcohol. We need more alcohol. Very much so. So now we have a payload of what? Um, oh, this is the, unfortunately, this is the part that everything is parented to. Oh, well. Well, we'll find out once we get to the top. Oh, I need to put a controller. That's the big one. Okay. The resized units, especially the control units, are a little bit annoying. Anyway, we're good to go, I think. So, uh, as you can see, uh, procedural fairings automatically resize to fit stuff. But unfortunately, it put itself in the wrong stage. Let's go here. All right. Well, uh, yeah. Let's get uh, launch clams and then see how our uh, 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 our attempt at an SLS works. Uh, obviously, I don't have the. I I do have the psi boosters the right size. Uh, well, no, actually, I don't. They're a little bit uh, overpowered. The fifteen thousand isn't right. I want fourteen thousand. Okay, now they're approximately right. And we definitely have the Delta V for this. Okay, you launch clamps. Keep saying. Now the gimbling on the space shuttle main engines will be enough to control this. Unfortunately, it might also be enough to uh, cause cause problems. We'll see, we'll see. Uh, cause problems for SAS. Alright, so let's call this SLS prototype. And you can sort of see why, I mean, th this is such an obvious launch system. I just the, I'm, I'm even gonna keep this orange, darn it. Uh, because that's what it is. And really just take the space shuttle op, uh, off and put the equivalent payload at the top. Very simple. All right, let's uh, let's try it out. Uh oh, oh. Okay. Uh, Kerbal joint reinforcement apparently not enough in this case. We need struts. Let's go back to VAB, shall we? Honestly, I don't blame. Uh, Kerbal joint reinforcement at all. There's no way. I mean, this 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 deserves struts. Um, let's see. Heavy. Well, we've got the thrust for it. Let's let's get the heavy ones. Let's not skimp on this part of things. Even though they 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 have a mass of one ton apiece, these heavy struts. It's not, uh, not trivial. Okay, well let's see if that manages to hold together. Maybe, maybe I should add more launch clamps. Let's add a set on this side and another set like this. Okay, let's go out to the launch pad this time. Oh dear. What is going on there? Um, okay, that 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 was okay. That was that was too str that was icky. Um, what's what's with this? Hey, uh, look, this is this is the same mod. This is stretchy tanks plus stretchy tanks. Okay, is it really just a little bit of an attachment point issue? Uh, I don't trust it. I I'm gonna put struts. Uh, let's put regular struts between these, and I'll put four. Uh, four. 
You're supposed to actually connect them. Well, at least something's in the way from it doing what it did last time. Uh... Okay, well, I don't know what else to do. Let's let's just try this out now. Oh no, it did not say solve that problem. Okay, you know what? I'm going to dump this conic cryogenic fuel tank, and I'm going to uh, show you how to do it with uh, with procedural fairings. Because that's more reliable. So you take uh, one of the interstage fairing adapters, and that's fine. Then we uh, resize it and adjust height. Just the top width. Unfortunately, it doesn't give numbers, so that's a little bit annoying. and N to adjust so all of them have different keys so here it's N to adjust the base width when I say all of them I mean all of the mods you have to check which key is which okay and Y to adjust the top width and then H to adjust the height and we use conic fairings for this okay clearly the top width is too much and maybe the bottom width could use a little bit of a no that's fine sit all right uh, we'll go with this um, I thought that the, the nice tanks would be good enough but apparently not um, these are the fairings right uh, yeah, these are the fairings on the inner stage. They can be dumped at the same time this de this all decouples, which is here. So let's move them all the way up to the top. This should be here too. Okay, zoom out. Okay, so at least the procedural fairings works. So we are now on the next stage. Um, apparently, even though I installed Engine Igniter, I do not have Engine Igniter configured properly here. So don't ask me about Engine Igniter. Uh, I don't know about it. Uh, yeah, let's let's just get on with this. Uh, throttle up. SES is on. Uh, it's looking good. It's looking vaguely SLS-ish. We don't need this right now. Mechjeb. Uh, I don't have my custom window configured anyway. Uh, let's get orbital info. So this is an info display that will show us our apoapsis and all. And yeah, let's try it. Cross your fingers, folks. Actually, it'll be a good thing to note our uh, mass. Oh, oh uh, the the space shuttle main engines are overheating a bit. That's fine. We don't need them that much. I'm gonna throttle down the main engines. Now, with real engines, the throttle only goes within the range of the engines. So these engines can only throttle from 68% to 100. Uh, I think 103% technically. Um, so you go, oh, what am I doing? I have to rotate. Um, yes, let's rotate. Ooh, okay, the gimbling on the space shuttle main engines. Haha, <laughs> that is always fun. And this is not the way we rotate. This is not the way we rotate. Uh, no, that's not the way we rotate either. Uh, wow. This is uh, too much gimbal. Too, oh, too much gimbal, too much gimbal. Okay, I think we're good. Uh, sort of. Ooh. This is feeling mighty unstable right now. Let, let me throttle back more. So like I was saying, uh, so right now we are not at 33%. We are much higher than that. 
Uh, and of course, we have no control over the SRBs. That's a different issue altogether. Come on, uh, get it to the right plane. There we go. I'm going 90, but uh, for any practical mission, that probably wouldn't be the right way to go anyway. I need to be lower. This is not the right ascent profile, but of course we're testing this for the first time. Man, this gets off real quick. Ah, uh, well, I guess I should have seen that coming, shouldn't I have? All right, folks, I think uh, this, this could do with some tweaking. We're not going to get this perfect this time around, <laughs> obviously. Um, well, yeah, what can I say? Let's, let's take a look at F3 for a sec. Um, cylindrical cryogenic balloon tank exploded due to overheating. It was, uh, it looks like my, uh, separatrons did, uh, were aimed at it. So I guess we'll have to, uh, tilt those out even more. Okay. All right, all right, let's 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 do that and try one more time. Let's go to the VAB and fix that. Yeah, I can sort of see, now that uh, we look at it like this, how they were aimed at it. Okay. Uh, we need symmetry here. And let's... We could tilt it up and down, too. Let's hope that's enough, though. Might need even more force. But it sure didn't say that we collided with it. Oh, these are wrong. Oh no, don't do that. <sighs> Tough to say, but... Depends how far out the flames go. I don't think this should hurt as much. Well, it should, certainly won't hurt as much as the previous one did. Let's try this now. Okay, we're ready to go. SAS on. Uh, we don't need to throttle all the way up, do we? Let's, let's keep it down. Overall info is fine. I've decided I don't like the alternate resource panel. <laughs> I, I just don't. Okay, uh, let's go. Let's get the little bit of roll correct so that we can be tilted in the right direction. You can see the volumetric clouds roll by. We still need better flame effects on these engines, though. Unlike with the space shuttle, I don't particularly need to do this launch accurately. After all, we've got plenty of buffer on the Delta V this time. I would like the that looking right though. Okay. Okay, we're off and uh, we need full thrust now, don't we? Yes, we do. Uh, okay, maybe not so much that we're overheating. Okay, SAS is having trouble. That's why we have that oscillation. SAS does not like all the gimbling on these engines. Oh, we've got oscillations again. Let me take SAS off. Whoa. See, now the gimbal is necessary if you've got a space shuttle, but really, I don't need this much gimbal when we we're talking about just the SLS. Uh, 
yeah. I wonder if uh, NASA will reduce the gimbal range on these rockets. Probably not. Uh, after all, they're not dealing with SAS. They're dealing with uh, sophisticated computers, so... Gonna throttle down. Oh, that just makes things worse. Wow. Ah, this thing is so wiggly. Okay, stop. Oh, uh, right, I haven't got any reaction wheels on it. So it's going to just tumble with its payload of alcohol. In space. We are in space. We're not in a great orbit, but... And uh, we used a lot more fuel than we should have. Because uh, this had a lot more Delta V than it, had, uh, than it needed. But I somehow managed to use a lot more. Not a very good launch, but at least we got to space this time and got into orbit. And uh, considering you saw me build it and saw every one of the test launches, <laughs> well, and this is the only the second one that really got off the ground, I think it's been a successful series of uh, prototyping. And uh, yeah, and there you have it. This is how you build a rocket in uh, with the realism mods but then basically that's it you all the stretchy tanks all the real fuels all of that here it is uh, completely out of control rocket <laughs> oh, okay I guess we can uh, I don't know uh, well since we don't have engine ignition working I guess we can relight now or can't we let's do de let's deorbit this thing Okay, now it's going to go back down into the atmosphere. Alright, so uh, we, we won't watch it explode. It's probably going to be very loud. So uh, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, especially about mods that you would like me to talk about in the future, introducing it to uh, people who might not be familiar with these mods who are coming to KSP, uh, uh, you know, new to uh, more of the recent versions of KSP, so uh, if you have any comments about uh, mods you'd like to see, uh, leave them in the comment section below. I didn't really talk about Kerbal Alarm Clock this time. I know everybody loves Kerbal Alarm Clock. But we'll do that in a different episode. But uh, yeah, so uh, see you next time.